to quiet myself a little bit. Okay, so uh, turn into the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Now let's pray. Dear God, we just, we just, we are just thankful for your greatness, your powerful word which speaks to us and that has the power to build us up into your, into your house. Thank you, Lord. We just want to have uh, anointed ears. We just want to have an uh, open heart that we would hear and receive from you. In, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are starting in the book of Genesis. And I want to speak today about a very beautiful uh, topic. I want to speak a little bit about communication. You know, uh, communication is a big thing. Uh, it wa always was. And the communication is basically a, a part of, of fellowship. When you are in fellowship with someone, there is always a certain way of communication. Uh, the most uh, precise communication uh, is, is by word. We can see this. I'll, I'll just turn back into the Gospel of John. And uh, we can see this understanding of this in Hebrew mind. Uh, John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, and then, uh, then we see that the uh, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So basically, in the beginning was logos. What's logos? Logos is a uh, is a is a uh, rational expression. Logos. That's why you have uh, uh, different uh, sciences uh, uh, coming from this word. Uh, you have uh, whatever later on. So there is this logos, rational expression. You have some certain thoughts, you have your mind, you are thinking something, and you can express it a certain way. You can express it by the body movement, you can express it by facial expressions, or you can do this rational expression that you, your thinking, you put into the words. And that's the uh, precise uh, description of your thought process. Nobody knows your heart, nobody knows your thoughts, but when you put it into words, you can describe how you feel, how you see things, you can describe your intentions, you can, you can communicate uh, uh, your purpose or, or manner of acting, you, you can describe and express love actions, you can bring hope and many, many other things. And then this word, uh, it's not just some floating energy, God is not uh, some type of energy, uh, it's this Logos which framed everything in Genesis 1 and it became flesh, John 1, 14, and dwelt among us. And uh, verse 17, he declared the Father to us, he exegeted the Father to us. Uh, so basically he described and explained uh, the Father, the, the God, uh, Father to us, uh, which we have in Jesus Christ, we can see. So the words are very important. Uh, one of these ways of communication, that's how God communicates to us. Uh, God brings his word and he left his word with us that we would have a precise definition and communication from him toward us. We do not live by feelings as some people may think, well, I have this feeling, so it means something, you know. Uh, many times you may see people and they'll say, well, I, I was there and look, you know, like, and they speak about goosebumps, I had goosebumps. It means, well, God was there. Well, maybe just somebody opened the window behind you, you got the goosebumps, you know. 
uh, or it was your emotional experience and you had this but it doesn't speak about nothing basically you know it's not proof of anything it's not disproving something else uh, uh, it's not precise you know emotional feelings and experiences uh, but we have the word which gives us uh, exactly precise definition uh, <clears throat> you may ask somebody are you saved and the person will say well I f I feel like I might go to heaven because I wasn't sinning lately for example you know but uh, precisely based on his word no it has nothing to do with the, f with the feelings it has to do with the grace gift of salvation and our part if we believed if we trust the saving work of Jesus if we have received this gift by believing in it pistis so this is very important uh, uh, to communicate and we can see this in Genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning God created heaven and earth now how did he create it everything verse 3 we can see and God said let there be light and there was light God said God created by his word this is the power of God's word God said and it happened and we can see here uh, uh, that uh, from the beginning God created its uh, creation of ex nihilo in Latin uh, which means that God created out of nothing this is very beautiful uh, God can create things out of nothing and we can see this principle throughout all the Bible for example uh, many great women in the Bible were barren and they were not able to have a child and God was able to take this barren woman and and give them the offspring you know give them the child God can create from nothing well maybe as we are here maybe we may say well I feel like I have nothing I have nothing to give to God but it's not a problem for God because God as we said he can create something from nothing by his word God said and there was light God speaks to us through his word and he creates the light he creates the hope he gives us the direction he, he uh, gives us freedom which was not there he gives us peace which was not there he gives us love which was not there God creates by his word we have it here from the very beginning how God created the visible and invisible world by his word he just said it and that was it God spoke Genesis chapter 3 and this is how we learned God's voice we we uh, study the Bible we listen to it and we learn how God thinks how he expressed himself in the world you know there are like many voices in the world you may ask somebody on the street and you can ask them well who is God tell me like about him and you will hear like thousands and thousands of different uh, opinions but when you come to the Bible then you can say well you tell me who is God and the Bible tells you precisely who God is what is his character and how he behaves and if you have somebody else with the same Bible which we have then he studies and he comes to the same biblical conclusions that God is the creator uh, he is the ruler of all and of everything Pantocrator and, and he is loving God so much God so loved the world that he gave his son for us that whoever believes may have everlasting life so his his word is very important that we would understand who God is 
Because it may happen in your life that somebody will come to you and he will say, you know, you know what I think that God is like. And you will face these challenges, but you can put it in, in, uh, in comparison with the scripture. And you see that many times what people say about God is not true at all. But we have this revelation in the scriptures. How many times we have seen people saying something. Well, God cannot be like this. The hell cannot be forever. I cannot imagine God like this, people will say. Well, the, the Bible clearly describes that the lake of fire is forever and ever, Revelations 21. Well, here it is. Now we have to deal with it. Now we have to understand what God means by it. And we know that this is a, this is a literal place uh, where, where people who rejected the grace of God will be burning in a hellfire forever and ever. That's why we are so compelled by the love of God to go and tell others. This is so beautiful about it. How, how precise definition we get from the scriptures. Now, Genesis 3, verse 8, there's this beautiful voice of the Lord. And it says here, And Adam and Eve, they heard the voice of the Lord, God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. You know, they heard the voice of God. God was walking, rejoicing in his creation, fellowshipping with Adam and Eve, with the first human uh, humans, and he spoke to them. He was coming in the cool of the day. Uh, he was uh, talking with them, having fellowship. Uh, he was teaching them the biblical truths. And here we see that they heard his voice, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Wow. So here you have the first man and woman, and they are hiding before the voice of the Lord. How many people today are hiding from the voice of the Bible? You just bring this voice of God, and they are hiding among the trees, they are hiding among their friends, they are hiding in clubs, they are hiding in uh, some uh, after school activities. They are hiding in so many activities and places. But there is the reason. And it says here, verse 9, And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Where are you? What is going on? Adam, we are supposed to have a fellowship. And God is saying in the same way today to the people, Where are you? Where are you people? What happened? I want to have a deep fellowship with you. Why are you hiding? What has happened? What is the problem? And we see it here. Verse 10. And Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid. People are afraid of the voice of the Lord. People are afraid of this Bible which speaks. Uh, we used to be called in, way back uh, the Bible Speaks Church. People are afraid of this voice. Why you were afraid? And it says here, because I was naked and I hid myself. So he heard the voice. He was afraid. Why? Because he was ashamed. Because he lost his covering, spiritual covering. He was ashamed of himself of his actions, that's why he was hiding before the presence of the Lord and he hid himself. The sin was the issue. He did something wrong and he started to hide it. He started to hide himself from this convicting word of God. And notice, God wasn't even bringing up the problem. The God's presence just came and he was convicted by himself. This is so amazing. How powerful the word of God is. You know, uh, 
so funny, like how many preachers, they, they like to preach against the sin. And they are preaching at people and naming saints and uh, coming to the, even to the point they are like pointing at people and, and really like being like hard on them. Well, we see here this principle. When you usher the presence of God, you know, people are convicted by themselves. When you start to speak about God's beauty and God's holiness, His purity, well, in this light, people see their dark spots. They are exposed. You don't have to expose the people. You don't have to preach at sin hard so much. Just bring the presence of the Lord and people will be convicted by themselves. You know, just bring out the beautiful character of God. We can just say, oh, God is faithful. God is so faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And people, many people will be convicted immediately because they know that they themselves are not faithful at all. They know they haven't been faithful in this, in that, over there, over here. We don't have to speak about unfaithfulness. Let's just bring the presence of the Lord. But what is the, what is the wrong side of this is the man's understanding after he sins. Adam and Eve, they have sinned and they started to hide themselves because they, uh, their thinking was polluted by listening to Satan's voice. As we said in the beginning, there is many voices in this world. And we have to be careful which voice do we give our ear to. In this case, we, we see that they gave their ear to the Satan and they listened to him. It says here, Genesis 3, verse 1, it starts with the verse 1. Now the serpent... He said unto the woman, you know, the serpent starts this conversation. He words out or he makes his voice and he speaks to woman. How many people, including us, at times we have listened to this strange voice. It reminds me of uh, John 10, the good shepherd. And the sheep will follow his voice. But the stranger's voice, they will not follow. His sheep, they will not follow the stranger's voice. We are his sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture and he's our shepherd. We will not follow the stranger's voice when he comes with his witty wisdom. Oh, don't, don't trust God. It's not as God said in Genesis 3. I have another view on it. Listen to my voice, says the serpent, the Satan himself. But his sheep will not listen to the stranger's voice. We don't want to listen to these strangers' voices because we know that God is different. We know that God is so beautiful. We will not let the Satan or the world or carnal believers or the lost unbelievers, uh, or religious people who have legalistic thinking and no understanding of God at all, dictate to us who God is. Because we have it here. How beautiful God is and how we can communicate and have a communication with Him. Adam, Adam says in verse 17, and, he, and God says to him, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife. And basically you have hearkened to the voice of, of the serpent, of the devil. That's why everything, all this has happened. Maybe you wonder uh, why people are so many times in troubles. Because they have hearkened another voice. They have listened some other message, which is not from here, which is not from this heartbeat, which is not from the character that has been revealed, and they just receive the lying message 
the devil is the liar from beginning, and they just eat it and they follow it. Like God, keep us pure before you. Keep us in love with your word. We don't ever want to become familiar with your word that we would start to turn somewhere else and look for some, some adventure or being fascinated by some uh, new things. Well, his mercies are new every morning. Didn't you know it? That his mercies are new every morning? You don't have to look for new wave. You don't have to look for new movement, new things. His mercies are brand new every morning. This is so fresh. I know what's the problem. The yesterday's manna is full of forms. Because people, they live from the yesterday's manna. That's why it's so full of forms and it stinketh. It's stinking. People who feed on old manna, they are stinking. Their breath is sick. Their thinking is sick. But we can feed on a fresh manna. It's a sweet like honey. Fresh word of God. New mercies. It's so powerful and so beautiful. Uh, now, how, how did Adam get into troubles? That's what we mentioned. He hearkened unto the voice of his wife and basically of the of the serpent. We have similar uh, story here in Genesis 4, verse 23. And Lamech said unto his wives, Adach and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. You know, and basically he says you that he has a slain man and, and uh, he makes confession. But what I want to point out here, that Lamech, in this case, he says, hear my voice, you wives. This is not the, the best example of the leadership because we are speaking about murder here. But now he, he just makes a stand and he makes this proclamation. But Adam was... Uh, listening to his wife. Genesis 16, we have another man who listened to his wife. And don't get me wrong, we are not finished with this yet. Don't get angry and don't leave now, because you will not hear the redemption of these verses. Genesis 16, verse 2. And Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing a son. I pray you, go unto my maid, unto my slave maid, and it may be that I may obtain children by her. So here Sarai, she wants to have a child. She is barren again, and she doesn't have... Uh, 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 she, is, she doesn't have the long-suffering, the patience to wait... For, for the promise of God. She doesn't have the patience to pray and wait for the answer. And she says, let's do a quick solution. Here's my, here's my maid. She's serving me. She's my servant. She says to her husband, you go in unto her and you have a sex with her and I'll have our child through her. Oh, how clever solution it is. And it says here, and Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. He listened to his wife at this point. And so that's, a, that's a tragedy. We know what happens. We know what problems it, it brings. First Timothy. Speaking about the voice. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. Our wives have the beautiful voices. 